is Beers, Wines and Spirits Review. Tonight, a very special beer. I've had this uh, since it came. It was sent to me by the awesome uh, Kent Beer Reviews. And, you know, it's something that uh, mm -hmm. I've not really come across as a beer reviewer until, you know, this last seven or eight months or so. The generosity of other beer reviewers towards other beer reviewers. And it's just something that, you know, it is amazing. So this is from Collect... Good evening, Kevin. This is from Collective Arts. This is a bourbon barrel-aged Imperial Porter. <sighs> good evening, Benjamin, and good evening, Bolton. How are you? And uh, I've been looking forward to reviewing this. And I wanted to pick a date. Good evening, sir. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> good evening, Steve. Posh shirt. Yeah, I've been out downtown today, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Been down the shops, yes, yes. So, look at that. I actually thought it was a small bottle. But uh, lovely artwork on the bottle. Um, collective Arts. And good evening, Mr. Burn Buildings. It's been a while. And uh, I am trying to make, and, and the wife agrees, that the six o'clock lives have got to be a thing. Not free reviews or four, like I was. I was getting a bit silly. It is. It looks a posh bomb, doesn't it? So it's 11.5%. It's a 500 ml bottle, extra strong beer, product of Canada. Oh, you won. Ah, fair play, mate. Good on you. And then it's got a government warning on. I don't do government warnings. Yeah, I'm not, not interested in the slightest in government warnings. Yeah, I do as I like. From Ontario in Canada. So Collective Arts. I have drank a Collective Arts beer before. Hey, cooking pizza, fair play. I know, I've got to do dinner. I've got to do dinner tonight. Um, wife warnings, yeah, yeah, we've all got them, don't we? <laughs> so, it comes in a fancy um, sleeve. And it also comes with some artwork that will be, you know, will be going on the raggies beer wall. On the ceiling, most likely. So, yeah, some birdies. And, uh, no, not a steak night tonight. No, we're having pulled pork. I have to make sure I wash my hands before I start pulling any pork. <coughs> that sounds so wrong as well, doesn't it? Okay. So yeah, some birdies there. I'm sure the good man Craig Kent Bear Reviews would know the birdies. I, on the other hand, don't. So put that out of the way, back in its sleeve, for it to go up. It will be going up on the wall. <laughs> yeah, pulled pork. <laughs> don't sound right, does it? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh dear, the dirty side of me. Yeah, exactly. The dirty side of me thinks so much this. So, lovely looking bottle. Um, I didn't think it was 500 mils. Bugger. 11.9%. Is a raggy bollocking coming? Yeah, possibly. Hot tub's on though, so I'll be able to sneak into the hot tub and hopefully not look too pissed up. He says, he says. So, I'm, I'm using probably the best glass in my uh, range of glasses. It's definitely a Raggy Avenue beer. Uh, I do love these. Um, I will be taking my time. Yeah, a good 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to neck it. That's for certain. So, lovely looking pour. Proper Imperial where... I mean, the, the the real Imperials are ones where you don't really get much of a head on. And like that, not much of a head at all. Did I miss it? So, it looks awesome in this glass. I do need, I do want to get a glass from uh, just the one. Yeah, 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 I'm not fucking drinking anymore. Oof. I have had a couple earlier, but I won't say too much on camera. <clears throat> yeah, so nice black pour this. Um, I would call it a light tan head. And like I say, with most imperial porters and stouts, you don't get much of a head. They don't, it's just a thing. They, they don't seem to, to, to be them sort of beers where you get a head on. Don't know nothing about the beer. I've not done any. X more gold was that. Just put the chats back on. 
Yeah, Exmoor Gold's okay. It's a nice standard bitter, isn't it, really? Or that type of golden ale bitter. It's uh, it's certainly not, you know, we you won't call it a box ticker. It's, it's more like a, a shelf filler. <laughs> Sometimes, yes, definitely, yes. Yes, one can, one can admit to that. <laughs> boozy, very boozy on the nose. Um, incredibly boozy on the nose. Wow. And that bourbon really, really shines through. Jesus, what am I doing? <laughs> only just got the wife on, back on site. Okay. I'm sure I'm not the only one out there who gets bollockings or warnings and things like that. You know, can't be the only one. Castle Lager, watching the lions, ah. Drygate. Oh, you, you sometimes can't get these. That's it. From a Scottish Audi. Yeah, I've been to Audi today. Um, English Audi. No new beers in. Yeah, I could have sworn somebody said the other day. That they, I know the Scottish have a word of new Audi beers in. But I, I'm, I'm sure someone said to me that the... Um, English Audis have got beers in, but no, nothing. I went to Own Bargains, note in there. Didn't even bother going to B&M. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a local beer delivery. Yeah, Little or um, Sainsbury's, aren't they, Drygate? I actually thought that Drygate was a Sainsbury's brand. You know how they have these fake brands? And obviously it's not. I've got a, I've got on a hair somewhere here, and I can see it. It's like a great, that's the, and I can see it, and it's just coming down in my. I can just see it in my vision. Like, oh, it's just there. The bastard is. Oops. That, oh, that's that fucking hurts as well. Uh, it does. It is strong, mate. And uh, good evening, Brett. Uh, Eleven point nine percent gifted to me by the very generous. Uh, Craig Kent Beer Reviews and uh, Collective Arts from Canada. Um, big boozy aroma, Blackpool, little bit of a tan head, big boozy aroma. That bourbon really shines through. Definitely got a hint of coffee on the taste as well. And I'm taking my time. One doesn't want no bollockings. And not only that, with beers like this, you want to take your time, don't you? Surely, as a beer reviewer yourself, you, when you get a beer of high ABV, you want to be enjoying the length of that beer. You're not a fan of the bourbons, I'm glad to you. I've got, funnily enough, and I picked it up from, um, put it there. Yeah. I've got an Imperial Farmhouse Pale from Boutillias. Yeah, like a, like a whisk type here. So I've got that. Um, farmhouse Pale, that, that sends, um, what's the word? Uh, it sends a nervous twitch to my bloody taste buds. Um, anything to, anything farmhouse worries me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get those, um, that, you know, that inclination that it's going to be something like Minkazi, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. It's, um, so I'm doing this review and then I'm going to do a review later. I'm trying to split the reviews wide apart. So I did a review about three o'clock. I'm doing this review at six and I may do a live review about nine o'clock. It depends, but certainly later. Oh God, the aroma, beautiful aroma. And like you say, these beers, they're more like a whiskey experience where you sit, you enjoy that taste, you let the air get to it, you let you let it breathe, let time get to the beer. It's definitely one of those. 
and it helps to have it in the right glass as well. Good evening, Andy. Yeah, it helps to have it in the right glass or a decent glass, a shameless. I've never watched Shameless, to be honest. Uh, we are going to watch Black Widow tonight um, on TV. So um, that should be good. I've watched it at the cinema, but, you know, watching it at the cinema is OK. And as long as I don't get too um, <coughs> abbreviated. Um, but watching it on the TV is great because you, you miss things in even in the cinema especially when you go for a piss salt barrel aged imperial porter oh bless you what was the ABV on that 11.5 or 11.9 um, I'll put it there now my head's spinning already 11.5 yeah yeah the writing's really you know because it's gray and the writing's like a subtle white 12.3 get in <laughs> yeah well i've got to pull my port later yeah yeah <laughs> i'm going in the hot tub first for an hour so <laughs> it's funny you know i can um I can be legendary sometimes in my drinking and then sometimes I fail really, really bad. Yeah, yeah you got to pull your pork, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Hot tub's ready for me. It's on 42 degrees at the moment. The wife's going in first. I'm not going in at that temperature. I'll go in. I'll look like a fucking lobster. Pardon my French. I do apologise for any Canadian people who, who, who watch this video at some stage in their in their lifetimes. As, as a person who watched the X-Files for nearly 10 years, I absolutely love um, Canada because it was filmed, if one remembers correctly, either in Vancouver or Ontario. This is from Ontario. I'm sure it's Vancouver where X-Files was filmed. And if anything, the last year, definitely a sip in Imperial Porter, you know, you drink it too quick, all you all you see is blur, you know. But to, to have watched the X-Files for 10 years, I was a massive fan of um, Gillian Anderson, David Duchovny. And I've, I've got every single episode on CD, uh, DVD or whatever you call it. Uh, <clears throat> but it's funny because the last season was all about a virus, a pandemic. And what's happened the last year? Oh, conspiracy theories. I've never seen Breaking Bad either. You know, I used to love, and we don't watch it like we should do. I used to love NCIS Los Angeles. I love the, the camaraderie, the storyline, you know, the actors. It's like watching your family, uh, but but in a, in, a, in, a, in that sort of way. Snow was my fa your favourite episode. Snow or Ice. That was very, very early in the days, wasn't it? Is she? I'm not sure. You know, she lives in London now. And still a stunner for her age. A stunning lady. Yeah. Peaky Blinders. Yeah, and that's not really my cup of tea, that ain't to be fair. NCIS. I did like... I, I liked the original NCIS, but I was more a fan of the NCI, NCIS Miami. That, to me, was more my cup of tea. Although that's been... That's been Killed up, hasn't it? I was a big fan of another one, but I forgot the bloody name of it now. I'm sitting there thinking, what's the name of it? Um, the, one of the murder jobbies. Yes, yes, very early the day that was. God, you're looking about the fourth or fifth episode in. But they were the classics. They were brilliant. And if you've got Disney... Uh, Disney Light, Disney, whatever it's called, on, on stream. All those episodes are on there. Columbo, wow, now you're talking. That's some time back, isn't it? That, that's, all, that's proper old-fashioned stuff. I'm trying to think of the American series that had all the deaths in. 
Jesus me. I've got about 500 DVDs over there. There's bound to be one, F one series of it over there. What I also liked, or, you know, as a series, Northern Lights, uh, Christmas Lights, Northern Lights, with uh, Robson Green and the, the other chap, I can't remember his bloody name. But uh, I like that as well. It's funny, it's funny the random stuff you like. Starsky and Hutch. I mean, to be fair, uh, the first four seasons of Benidorm were probably some of the best TV. Definitely, Luke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. I can't say things live. Get me in trouble. Quim Quincy. Bless you. Yeah, definitely. Quincy. But yeah, Benidorm. Benidorm. Oh, Madge. Madge and... Um, oh, what was his name? You know, him dying. It was a killer. He's still all over. <laughs> Bless you, mate. There has been some amazing TV over the years. There really has. Still not getting notifications. Fucking YouTube. I am, without a shadow of a doubt, doing six o'clock. Because we're not really going out anyway. So most nights, 99 times out of 100, I'll be doing the live at six o'clock like I used to. You got yours straight away. It's strange, isn't it? These chuffing notifications. But yeah, six o'clock live, you know, if anybody shows up that, you know, it is what it is, I suppose, in that way. But uh, yeah, definitely doing a live six o'clock review. I'm going to do one that I can take my time over as well. You know, not rush it. I ain't rushing this because um, I don't want to get battered uh, by the beer. And it's such a great beer as well massive thanks to the, to the Kent Bay reviews and for and it's amazing that for somebody he, he is a man of birds um you know he loves his um ornithology yeah I like hornithology yeah but uh, <laughs> yeah I do apologize to the wife if she, if she watches this some, sometime in the future it's a joke <clears throat> It is a fancy porter, yeah. Canadian porter. Um, really decent. Northern Monk and Lervig. North Star. Oh. Did it? Propped up halfway. Yeah, I'm hoping not to get a red card tonight. No, no, no. No. And I'm not surely not the only bloke or the, the only one of us who doesn't get a bollocking when we drink too much. You know, be honest. Yep, I'm not the only one, am I? I can't be the only one. I'd be gutted if I was. I mean, my wife, she's had to put up with a lot. You are, mate. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking. Yeah. We was up to something like half two watching TV last night. God knows what I was watching, because... To be end, in the end, I was I was fucking shattered. I've been up since half five in the morning, so yeah. But um, yeah, hot tub time soon. So loving the glass. <laughs> mm, I know I do that, and uh, then I get the red cards. No, we haven't tag tapped it yet. What we're gonna do? Yeah, it's on cask. So uh, there's a wedding in, in the next week. They are having, uh, they're bringing their own cask beer or ordering their own cask beer. So they're that. And the boss is using them as guinea pigs. He's never used the system. So, that I know of at least. So they're going to use them as guinea pigs. And then straight after that, the Raggy's Golden Ale's going on cask. And I pray to God that I get a pint of it. I, I'd be absolutely mortified if I did not get at least one pint. And it's going to be a review. I don't, I don't care if it's a review for work, you know, for them to say, you know, to use me as a bit of um, a bit of a promotion stuff. Yeah, definitely. 
I reviewed the Salt's Crash the other day. Top, 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 top beer. Salt Beer Factory. Like Northern Monk. Like Siren. Like Wild Beer. Born in Carsey. Um, Raggy's Ale in Morrison's. Jesus Christ, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Fucking hell, if it makes it to Morrison's, I want some pennies. <laughs> Using my name and my uh, um, my looks. Oh, for fuck's sakes. It makes me look 10 years older. I'm sure I don't look that old. Yeah, someone's going to say I do, but there you go. <clears throat> but anyway. Big beer, this is. You know, these are the sort of beers you pay a premium for. I haven't got a clue what Craig paid for this. Um, yeah, bang, rag Yeah, that'd be smart, wouldn't it? Um, could you imagine? But you never know, do you? You know, these days, with social media, with things going viral, it only takes one of the big social media outlets to post something about your beer, about you being a beer reviewer, for you to go viral that's what's happened to um simon from uh real ale craft beer he went viral it went on set it went on our local news i'm open only fans yeah i've never been on that i need to go on i keep hearing about this only fans i've never been on seven pound 75 sipping yeah sip it mate don't fucking neck it enjoy the beer but you know we're in a, we're we're in a, we're in an age where you can go from being and not putting it horrible, but being a nobody to being a bloody superstar in a click of a fingers, and this can happen to any one of us at any time. We are in that age. I want to get my kit off. Yeah, what about? That? You want to see my? You want to see my boobies? Good evening, Darren. Have you recovered from your ciders last night? Your 8.2% ciders. Yeah. Whew. There's only so many of them I can neck. You know, there's, there's limits in life to what you can drink and what you can't drink. Although sometimes you can be a legend and drink absolutely shed loads and it not affect you. You get tipsy, but not affect. New Relic. Thank you, yeah, I'll definitely keep my kit on, yeah. I'm not like Simon, I don't get my uh, fucking top off. Be interesting, wouldn't it, you know? And you never know, you never know where social media is going to go. Legend. <laughs> yeah. I think I swear too much to be anybody. For them to take me, I think, I think they look at the beer reviews and think, God, that bloke swears. We don't want him doing, we don't want him on our front pages. He's got far too much of an opinion. Although now and again, I do actually drink. I do actually do the odd decent beer review. Good evening, Miles. 8.2% every day. Get him, mate. I, I find varying beers, such as the surface. Don't drink the same beer every day. You, you don't feel it. Topless beer with you. No thanks, mate. <laughs> no. <clears throat> One brewery send you free beer. Fair play, Andy. Hey. That, to me, I've had... And I've been doing beer reviews for three years now. You know. And it's only happened a couple of times. So, you know, it's nice. You must be doing good beer reviews. Yeah. Um, live beer reviews are a trouble because live beer reviews, you're not as, I don't think you're as um, actively reviewing the beer as you would with a focused beer review, which is why I, I try to do more focused beer reviews. So I think if I, if for my channel going forward, and we're always reviewing what we do and how we do beer reviews, but I think one, certainly live beer review, a long beer review. All right. An old version of it. Okay. Hmm. No miles. We drink what we drink. No, I like to be commenting. 
as as the as the as the comments come in, I like to be doing the interaction. I can't stand it. I watched something last night. I won't say who it was. It was a live last night that a couple of beer reviewers were doing, and it took them half an hour to get to the point where I commented, and then they ignored my comment, and I thought to myself, well, up yours. I will not even bother with those two channels again. And it's that thing where, you know, interaction, in, for me, interaction is key. And um, you've not enough, not got enough subs for live review. You can do live reviews, um, Andy. You can. Have I found four extra yet? No, not yet, mate. So. Cheers. So, Andy, um, if you use, if you've got a Chromebook, you can go live and do live beer reviews, mate. But you can also use StreamYard, like Bolton's just said. You can use StreamYard and do live reviews on StreamYard a hell of a lot quicker. It is, it can be scary doing live reviews, trust me. It's easier for me talking to a camera when no one's there than talking to a camera. Because one, you never know how many people are going to show up. Don't be worried if no one shows up. It's, it's all good practice. It is. It's, it's good practice for the future. And, you know, there are a lot of beer reviewers. Um, Bullman beer reviews and Mersey beer reviews are very good. At looking out for new beer reviewers or newish beer reviewers, should we say, and very good at introducing them into the community. Same with Dean, Dean's beer reviews, he's another one. He may contact you at some stage and say, Do you fancy doing a live? And uh, he's a cracking bloke, top class bloke. Oh, these chuffing. There we go. I do apologize. Stupid blooming comments keep disappearing. Two kilogram of mountains. Ooh. It's amazing, you know, once people get into craft beers, how their taste buds develop. My wife, she, she drank a 7.2% black, uh, black lager. She loved it, drank the whole lot. So that's impressive. And then she drank a couple of porters and stouts. She's not interested in any way, shape with IPAs. She doesn't like that taste. So this is Supping Steve. I've not really watched any of his. Good evening, Thomas, and congrats for the win, mate. Um, you want to? Did you win a co-pinter or a pinter? But anyway, congrats anyway. Yeah. I think craft beers, you know, that, that they, once you've, once all that taste gets into you, rusty pipes, <laughs> she, need, you, she needs to try, what, what in some ways what you need to do is do beer reviews, save a little bit from each beer review and say to your wife, have a go at that, what do you think? I may do that with this beer. God, it'll probably choke when she... I won't tell her it's 11% because she'll can hit me. But I'll let her. Swigging Steve. I've heard of Swigging Steve, yeah. Pirat Triple Hop 10.5%. Get in, Thomas. Yeah, I think you have to... With any drink, with any beer drinker, you have to get your palate used to it. Your palate is so important. Then you start off on something that is interesting to you, that you can drink. And then you, you as years go by, it's, some people, they can drink it straight away. With other people, it's a gradual process. And you rust flavours. Strange, isn't it? But she loves the aroma. Yeah, that's strange. Usually aroma goes hand in hand with the drink. Not always, though. But 
these days there's so many different types, so many variations. If there's something craft beer has done, it's brought men, women, lager drinkers, cider drinkers, beer drinkers all into that fold. And now craft beer breweries are actually expanding out and doing the, the traditional beers like best, best bitters, milds and all that sort of stuff. So it's interesting how it, how it, you know, it was quite a small thing, but now it's absolutely massive. Steak and Barola. Oh, I'd love a steak, man. In fact, I'd love a Barola and all. Bless you. Can't beat a decent Barola. No, no. And they apologise for being bad to women and bad to their employees. I've not watched uh, Brewdog for quite... To be fair, though, I don't really watch much TV. Yeah, I managed to catch 10 minutes of Emmerdale the other day and it was like, Jesus Christ, never again. And the soaps just kill me. They just absolutely kill you. You know, watching soaps, it's, um, oh dear, oh dear. So again, very boozy. Yeah, Brewdog sold out back in, well, they came to Sainsbury's back in flipping heck. I think it was 2011 when they first appeared at Sainsbury's. Because I joined Sainsbury's in 2010. Then we had a range review. And um, Brewdog came. They had six of their punk IPAs. And the ABV was something like fucking 6% back then. Um, and no one bought it. £6.50 for six little cans. No one was buying it. And I bought it because it went on went to reduce price. I got six six for a quid. Yeah, I think Brew Dog's punk image has gone downhill quite a bit, hasn't it? You know, when I think of craft breweries, and I don't even look at cloud water to this, for me, Northern Monk, for me, are one of the best, you know, big breweries, shall we say. Yeah, um, I agree with that. You know, um, Brewdog know how to how to um, exploit the press and the social media. And good evening, Tad. Burgers, eh? So this is from Collective Arts. It was sent to me from the very good uh, Kent Bear Reviews. Um, it is an 11.5% barrel aged Imperial Porter. So black, light tan head, um, big boozy bourbon and boozy notes on the nose. And it, that's basically followed all the way through. Absolute cracker of a beer. That's why I'm taking it slow as well, because I don't want to get drunk. Homemade burgers. Oh, God. I could just do with a burger now. I'm having some pulled pork. I am, in a bit. <clears throat> Can't beat pulling your pork. Sounds so wrong, doesn't it? Whoever thought of the name pulled pork? I mean, pulled chicken, yeah. Pulled chicken's good. I can understand pulled chicken, but pulling pork. I could just imagine somebody doing slices of beef in a supermarket and putting down it, beef curtains. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it would sound so wrong, but funny as well, obviously. And then, like with pork, you know, going into a supermarket and there it is, the pork sword, and you're like, Jesus Christ. And you just walk away, wouldn't you? You'd be like, I can't buy that. I can't take that home. Uh, can you... Yeah, oh, wifey. Here's some pork sword. And she'd look at you thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm not having that shit. In fact, I'll have him. So, <clears throat> anyway, beautiful Imperial Porter. 35 minutes in. 
and uh, I need to get myself used to doing lives, you know. It's funny how you get out of the habit. Um, at one stage, I was totally, it was all about lives. I didn't really do anything else but lives. Oh, woman raising stout later, bless you. Yeah, probably reviewing the strong beers first. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go, don't go to the weak stuff first and then do a strong. Oh, me, steaming. And obviously, being from Yorkshire, you know, your beer reviews, you can have a bit more fondness for the Yorkshire stuff, which, we you know, I, as a Nottinghamshire person, East Midlands, I am more, you know, I like to do them sort of beers. Two months to age. All my beers are aging lovely. And uh, I'm going to give Craig a sample of each of the beers that I've brewed. I don't think there's any right or wrong way with beer reviews. You do what pleases you. So do everybody else, you know. But doing pissed up beer reviews, well, there's... Um, Yorkshire do the best beers. <clears throat> the own brew artisan lager. Oh, God. Bloody it's terrible when you've got to keep clicking the camera. So, the artisan lager. Uh, it was a couple of months, to be fair, before it started to taste nice. Um, although I did leave it a while, because to be fair, I was scared of tasting it. It was absolutely, it was dire. You know when it was in here? The stink coming from the barrel, uh, the bucket barrel, was awful. And adding the hops, the hops did it. The hops sorted it out. Um, and in the end, it turned out to be a really nice lager. You know, I was, I, I was actually quite surprised. Homebrew is amazing. There are some absolutely amazing kits you know from a basic homebrew standpoint um you know you can start off with rilko's kits you know once you bought you need a fermentation bucket 30 liter don't go for a 25 you'll know why um a, a barrel you know but these days a lot of fermentation buckets come with um taps on which is great because it saves part of the process. Um, but yeah, some of the kits out there are amazing. I mean, I, I've done some amazing brews. Um, Love Brewing, their beer works range is absolutely so awesome. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. Uh, that's a bit last that long. I'm struggling to make any of mine last. Yeah, you come down the bear room and you think, oh, sneaky little um, imperial ginger barley wine or imperial cream stout. I've got this imperial thing going on, strength-wise. And uh, one of these days, I'll actually brew something. It will last. Wow. That's perseverance, that is. So... I'm not even halfway down. Oh, there's a bit left in. So yeah, I'm not even half halfway down. The I'm, I think I am just about half over halfway now, and that's 38 minutes. No one's in the octub, so uh, the wife's still busy. So black poor tan head, and like I say, oh that nose. You know, it's true decadence, richness. Taste awesome. Yeah, the rum. Oh, dear. I did add some sugar for secondary fermentation. But I think I need to add a bit more now. I've just transferred the rest of it into bottles today. So half a teaspoon of sugar just to properly secondary ferment it. So the bottles go nice and hard. Um, that's on the agenda probably tomorrow. But I've also got the Imperial Mild. So I've got a mild ginger barley wine, cream stout, honey porter with bourbon, and the spiced rum chocolate stout. Five different big buggers. 
Yeah, yeah. There's, there is some big car boot sales in Nottingham. One at Calverton, one at Colic. I don't really go to them, to be fair. Sunday morning, I like to have a rail in if I can. Yeah, it's proper decent beer. Oh, dear, oh dear. I'm trying not to sup it too quickly. I can feel it. I really can feel it. And uh, if I can feel it now, and I've still got probably near enough half a flipping glass yet left, um, I ain't going in the uh, ain't going near the wife just yet. Bollockings are ensuing. But sometimes it's 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 nice to do a longer live. When it's something this strong as well, it's good to do a proper live, um, a longer review because you can talk about the beer, you can see it aging, not aging, um, with the air getting to it, you know, coming coming into its own. And it is, it's beautiful. Drinking out of the white glass helps as well. 11.5% Thomas. It's uh, oh, some strong shit. No, no, he doesn't, bless him. And uh, when he comes to Nottingham, I've got three good beers for him to do a dual review. I'm going to set the beer room up next week for dual beer reviews. So I've got stuff on the floor to move. I need to push the camera angle back a little bit more. Good evening. And doing all right, thank you. Yeah, a little bit tipsy on this. 11.5% Collective Arts Brewing. From Canada, Ontario, and going down the treat as well. I can feel it in my voice. You know, when you know in your voice, you're starting to get a little bit tipsy, and I, I can feel it. But yeah, going to set this area up. Going to push the camera back so that there can be at least two or three dual beer reviews. And uh, and if Craig wants to use this to do a few beer reviews, then. I'm all good, he can drink what he likes. And uh, if he wants a few of my beers, he can drink them as well. I'm all good with that. But uh, see you later, mate. Enjoy. Now, let's be fair, reviewing beers is the, is the greatest um, excuse ever. I'm, I'm just going down the shed to do a beer review. Yeah. <laughs> and... For excuses, as excuses go, it's a cracking excuse. Yeah. And the wife knows that as well. She's not that. So, um, big, boozy bourbon. Um, very strong. I did get a touch of coffee earlier. Um, but the nose, God. This is that type of beer that, and I know, you know, if you can do an Imperial Stout or Porter beer review in five or 10 minutes, then fair play to you, you know. But I don't think you're getting the full experience. We can all neck beers, we can. I mean, I could have necked this in about a minute if I really wanted to, and then felt the bloody consequences later. Um, but to be drinking a decent beer in a decent glass, a glass that showcases the beer. Um, I love this glass, I, you know, from Bang the Elephant. But, um, you know, subvert the stereotype. Um, but, yeah, I went to Brew Dog. They had an amazing glass there. Glassware does make a difference. To put a top-class beer in a top-class top class glass just makes that beer... It makes it taste better. It is, mate. It is. It's it's like uh, sipping a fine wine. I mean, at that strength, 11.5%. It's in wine territory anyway. Oh. And it hits the spot. And it's what beer drinking is about. It's what craft beers are all about. You know... We, as, as a family, we'd love to go all over the UK. 11.5%, Darren. Um, and one day, you know, you know, going up north, going to Scotland, uh, nipping over. There's a couple of beer reviewers in Scotland that I'd love to see. I'd love to see the top class uh, Sofa King drunk. 
i.e. Danny, otherwise known as Danny, obviously. And I'd love to meet him. And the likes of um, a Rampant Lime Beer Reviews, Jim. Um, Sterling's his hometown. And I'd love to meet him as well. You know, there's some amazing people, not just beer reviewers, but friends of the communities as well. If anything, the last, the last year, I think the beer review community, not just beer reviewers, but fans of watching beer reviews, I didn't pay for it, mate. I got it sent to me from um, Craig, Kent Beer Reviews. And I think it's amazing, you know, meeting up with other people that are part of the community. It is, and I can't wait. One, I can't wait for Nottingham Craft Beer Festival, two weeks today. And uh, and then in a couple of months time, um, Robin Hood Beer Festival and meeting up with, you know, there's many people that come up. Obviously, a lot of people like me are family people, so they, it's a struggle. I understand that. You know, it's not easy coming to a different city, especially when you're, um, um, you know, you're coming out of COVID money and, and that. I understand that. I, sh I would struggle to go to another city in the UK and, and do, do a beer festival. One, I'd need lots of money to pay for the hotel, to pay for the beer. I will do it one day. Um, and uh, I get really bloody anxious as well. So going on a train to somewhere I've never been to before, uh, it would be, it would be a, a bit of a frightening experience. Yeah, and I, I do think the Robin Hood Beer Festival is going to be a meet um a collection um i mean if everybody comes who says they're coming craig isn't going to come because of, of issues we know craig what where craig's coming from last october you know you know you know you, know, you can't put that into words what he lost <clears throat> but the likes of mersey mersey beers uh bowman beer reviews Harry from um, Blue Nose Beer Reviews are all coming up. And, I mean, they're all fucking happy can drink some beers, them lads can. And, uh, you know, just to meet them, meet everybody in the community. Oh, God. The beer reviews that are going to be churned out that day. Fucking hell. If I don't hit 30 or 40 beer reviews in the space of a couple of days, I'll be surprised. Because you can drink. I will be keeping to the minimum amount of beer at any one time and to be fair if i can i'll do samples and do a sample beer review because you know it's all good really um although if i do a sample of any beer i'll also buy a beer from that beer because i want to support the beer the brewery as, as well i don't just want to pinch beer um one third was the minimum whether it's any less, I ain't got a clue. A vaggy tour bus. <laughs> That'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? And you know, um, going to Nottingham Craft Beer Festival, going to Robin Hood Beer Festival. Obviously, there was no beer festivals last year. So, two years ago, my channel was nothing. My channel, to be honest, is still nothing now. But... Local breweries know of me. I know they do. So to go to there, to go to the, the Robin Hood Beer Festival, Nottingham Craft Beer Festival, this is going to be interesting. No, the minimum pour can be, uh, I think it's a third of a pint. Yeah. I've not tried calling Premier Nitro. No, 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 not seen it to be fair. Yeah, it's normally a third or half a pint at, the, at, the, at Robin Hood. Uh, as for the Nottingham Craft Beer Festival, I have no idea. Not been, so I ain't got a clue. So. Oh, bless you. All good with the wife? I'm just a normal bloke from Nottingham, you know. It's as simple as that. You know, I don't big myself up. I don't. I don't want to. You know, um, I go through enough um, 
stuff in my mind every day and uh, you know <clears throat> fucking hell I can feel the bear Jesus Christ it's always a worry isn't it operations with, with any of your family it's always a worry and uh, yeah fingers crossed mate yeah I mean hip operations my 82 year old I think he's 82 and, uh, and my old friend who passed away sadly, he was 89 and he had an op hip operation and he was all good. So that just shows you, doesn't it? Um, yeah, sadly he passed away, but he had cancer and he passed away on, on his own terms. And uh, fair play, 89. Can't fault that. So, fucking steaming. Steaming, Jesus. Oh, oh, Craig, what did you do? <coughs> I thought this was actually a free, free, a free six five mil bottle. I didn't realize it was a 500 mil bottle, so proper feeling it now. And uh, I'm going to sit out on the um, on outside after this and just uh, chill out a bit and uh, the you know, get the beer out of my system. Good evening, Lee. Been a while, matey. Hope you're well. You see, as a Nottingham person, I'd love to go to the likes of Scotland. The, yeah, <laughs> I'd love to go up there because um, the countryside's amazing. If anything, it is. It's smooth, boozy, it's rich, decadent. Oh, bless you. Um, but yeah, the countryside in Scotland and in Wales is absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, in lockdown, I watched all these um, programmes about the scenery. And uh, it was amazing. It's think, you think to yourself, you go abroad for scenery, but the UK, Britain, UK, whatever you call it, you know, the scenery is a bloody amazing. A bit like this bit, really. Oh, that is damn nice. I've been there on the shifts, you know, working overnights, working till 10 o'clock at night. It's a killer, isn't it? You know, but we do what we do to survive. We do what we do to bring money into the family. You know, at the moment, luckily, I'm in a job where I'm doing seven till three tomorrow. Yeah, Forest, Nottingham Forest to play in tomorrow. Yeah. Ooh, let's hope they play well. Yeah, we need Forest. You've been doing a few nights as well, Tad. Well, fair play, mate. 11pm? No, no, not 11pm. No, no, no. I have no idea who they're playing tomorrow. No. I might do a live review at 9pm. Yeah. I might try and do a live review at nine. Definitely six. Six o'clock every day, one live. I mean, we're already on 50 odd minutes. So, you know, an hour beer review is, is good. And I will try and get beers. <sighs> Orkney. Oh, flipping out. You've got Orkney Brewery. Amazing beers. Amazing beers from Orkney Brewery. Yeah, some absolute belters. So... Feeling steaming. Fucking hell, I need, I, need to dis I need to sober up a bit. The wife hears this voice. She'll know within two seconds that I'm half tanked. So, black poor, tan head. Um, on the nose, bourbon, boozy. On the taste, bourbon, boozy. When Nottingham Beer Festival's on, I'll be doing a lot. You can see Orkney, bless you. Um, I'll be doing a lot on those two days when Craig's over. I'll try and do a 9pm. Yeah, try. Yeah. I think a 9pm 9, a 9 live is not a bad time to do a, a beer review as well. And uh, try. Um, oh, my. God, I'm, I feel half tanked. 
um, big boozy Canadian beer from Collective Arts. Look at the birdies. And it's quite, it's quite something that Craig can beer reviews. Yeah, the glass is amazing. Yeah, Craig Kent Beer Review sent me this. And he is a ornithologist. Yeah, I'm a hornithologist, but two different types of birds. Um, from Canada, bourbon barrel aged imperial porter. And uh, yeah, 11.5%. And uh, you know, what, a, what an amazing gift to send to somebody. And I've got the artwork, the artwork's going on the wall. Really do feel pissed now. Sounding pissed as well. I can, I can hear it. It's funny, isn't it? Do you, do you get the same when, when you listen to yourself talking? And it's like, fucking hell, I sound pissed. Well, I do. And, uh, oh dear. So, would I drink it again? Hell yes. Top class. Mexican ale. Oh, bless you. I've not tried that one. Um, out of five. So, Blackpool, tan head. Out of five. Oh, for me, a good 4.5 out of five. A very good barrel aged Imperial Porter. Very drinkable. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm saving this little bit for the wife. So, We'll see how she goes. She might, she might say, I'm not drinking that shit. But she might not. You never know. And as always, thank you everyone for the participation, commenting, liking, subscribing. You know, it's all, it's all good. Um, interaction across social media is amazing. And uh, right, got to go. Nearly an hour. And uh, feel half tanked. Oh my God, I feel tanked. Jesus Christ. Oh, and uh, see you soon. Six o'clock tomorrow. Cheers, everyone. Oh, dear, oh, dear.